I will try to cover a few important uh, concepts uh, from Spark. Okay, so whatever I'm going to come uh, cover in these tutorials or in a sessions, right? Definitely, those are useful for for working a real time, you know, projects, as well as uh, you know, interview purpose. Because uh, based on my current experience, uh, I can say this. Uh, and the topics, definitely, you might aware because if you are already learning a Spark, you might aware that subjects or a topics. I can say, you know. even you know the topics by end of this session definitely you will feel that you learn some extra or you you might get a full you know command on the topic okay so i want to explain in a granular level okay sometimes you feel you you may feel that okay this is very you know easy why should i you know listen something like that i know um, doubts but be be patient and uh, um you know we should understand others also right so i want to bring all all of them whoever is attending the session on a same page okay hope you are able to see my screen correct anyone yes yeah please. yeah yes narit okay stay with me for next few minutes a uh, few couple of minutes i can say uh definitely will feel you know a better once we complete the topics that we plan for the day uh let's get started so guys uh, this is a common topic that you know everybody asking me and this is also important and i will try to touch some practicals like you know i i'm not doing any hands on but still i will show you the pictures of hands on so that you people can easily you know correlate with the uh, with these concepts to the real time scenarios okay and you know uh to understand how spark execute a job internally okay so we should not go the topic directly okay before that there are some prerequisites to understand that concept right so if you know that then then the topic to understand is very easy it is kind of a reading a book to read a book we have to learn all alphabets and all right so the similar way to understand that concept we have to know the concepts behind so that is where i just taken only few uh, concepts which are more important to know that concept how spark executes a job internally okay i'm sure by end of the session you will get a fair idea you no need to mug up you just understand and that's it okay so rdd so rdd is a first concept that we should know uh you know then only uh we can able to understand spark internal architecture okay or execution plan we can say and rd rdd is an immutable distributed collection of elements of a data partition across a node in the cluster majority of you, you people already know the definition and this is the definition which is i taken from the google okay there is no you know a uh, special definition for it but you have to have a some idea what exactly is an rdd in spark and partition is a easy topic but again very important to know the concept okay partition is a slicer of our data set okay in hadoop world we can say is a block okay so here in a spark we are call it as a partition okay generally what hadoop uh, version 2 Uh, what is the default uh, partition size or block size is 128 mb right and transformation actions okay these are very very important guys uh, try to understand okay so i will give you a, a, a uh, you know, we have a dedicated uh, slide for it transformations and actions and types of transformations there are two types of transformations narrow transformations and wide transformations okay we'll we'll discuss a uh, couple of minutes on these these topics okay and single state forward definition for a spark job okay the spark job is a single computation action that gets instantiated to complete a spark action okay you no need to mug up these uh, abbreviations okay or a definitions i can say please wait for some time okay once you see practically then you can give your own answer you no need to follow this terminology in interviews and to ask Though I'm writing here is a some technical term that is a single computation unit perform on a single data partition is called task, right? Uh, if you ask me, right, 
what i can say it is a unit of task you know unit of work which we perform on a particular data set that's it the task is you know is a is a general word right it's not a belongs to any you know it's not belongs to completely a uh, spark right so it's a task is a task that's it it's a unit of work which we generally deliver that we can call it as a task that's it you can say this one stage a stage is a set of independent tasks all computing the same function that needs to run as a part of spark job okay again this definition is only for a reference purpose you can give your own definition after after all discussions okay hope this is the agenda i will will explain in detail in uh, next couple of minutes with the good pictures so that you people get understand both theoretical and practical hope this is fine and let me go ahead and see the the next topic that is transmissions uh, transformations and actions okay so you never see uh, a picture that i am going to uh, show you here um, definitely you won't forget once you understand this concept okay i want to correlate with our real time example um, what is transformation and action in our lives okay so that the similar way you can understand in spark as well okay so this picture definitely many of you know this right let us say at our home right there is a sump okay there is a motor there is a pipeline there is a switchboard i think this picture is denotes that okay you can able to understand why i referring this picture okay if you are able to understand this picture then rdd transformation actions you can easily understand okay i don't think you will finding a difficulty to understand the picture let me explain once again okay let's assume at our home or a house we have a motor uh, to pump the water from a sump to a tank okay so generally uh, we have a pipeline right let us say you take this rdd1 rdd2 rdd3 rdd4 i have a four reno pipes which i joined okay to bring the water from a sump to a, a tanker right so now that joins are the you know a combination of pipes i am calling as a rdd1 rdd2 rdd3 rdd4 you now tell me i just created a pipeline okay i just created a pipeline but i haven't started it okay i didn't given a power to that system yet then will will we get a uh, you know water we don't get a water right because until unless we switch on this uh, you know uh, switch on the power we will get the water right until unless we switch on the power we won't get the water right so if we want the water okay if we want the water then what we have to do we just switch on the you know a power right so let us assume i switch on the power okay then what will happen then water will come to sump to tank right that's it same way is happening in spark also what is transformations and actions transformations are just a you know logical part that we are calling as like you know pipeline in other words here pipeline we are creating a pipeline okay by doing some transformations okay by performing some transformation on rdds right but it doesn't mean that you will get a output immediately once you do as transformations no you won't get the data immediately we even if you want to see rdd output you won't get it until unless you perform any action correct so you want if you want to see the rdd's output then you want to trigger an action in spark like how we switch on the motor in our real time guys so now what is transformation transformations are the operations which are applied to an rdd to create a new rdd right so it's a simple definition and the examples i can say may have flat may have reduced by or we can call it as a transformations right in coming to action action are the again operations which are applied on a rdd which return a value to the driver program after running a computation on the data set here when we switch on this power then we used to get a water right that is that is called you know 
that is called a output that is called a result right the same way actions will do that task so example actions are collect reduce or reduce by key or count by key or for each so many other okay these are only small example hope you are able to understand if you already have some experience you would have already a good idea but the 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 you know those who are attending first time or learning first time i think this will give some insights to them if you are able to understand the picture correctly then the concepts of spark transformations actions are pretty much easy easy you never forget it i'm sure this is how when i start learning any new topics or a new subjects i will try to you know compare uh, with our real time scenarios so that i won't uh, you know uh, try to you know uh, lose those concepts so it is a very easy way to understand or remember a long time when you understand like this guys i think this slides might be a slide might be you know understood if you have any questions definitely i will try to take shortly uh, let me you know uh, just go ahead first and explain the rest of the topic okay now now what was our uh, previous topic um, you know transformation access completed now types of transformations narrow and wide right let me go back okay let me go back so i have already explained guys i don't know if you are attending today is the first session i recommend you to go through all our previous 7 to 8 sessions on the same series on the same playlist so that you will get a more clarity so what is void transformation what is nice a narrow transformation you have to understand okay so i don't want to explain again and again but let me uh, uh, give you a, sh a short discussion okay so let us assume you know you don't need to worry about this con you know shuffle with combiner and all just concentrate on the picture okay if you are seeing any data shuffling see here shuffling phase is there right so if the data shuffling is happening any transformations level okay then uh, then then that kind of transformations we can call it as a wide transformations if if there is no shuffling in entire you know pipeline of transformations then we can call it as a those kind of transformations we are calling as a narrow transformations okay so whenever there is a shuffling happen like group by kind of you know aggregate by we can call it as a we can call it as a y transformation If the transformation doesn't have any shuffling concepts or a grouping data concepts, then that kind of transformation we are calling it as a narrow transformations. Okay, just understand this much is might be enough. Quickly go to our slide. Okay, now hope we covered narrow and uh, transformation actions, narrow transformations and wide transformations. Now we will move to actual topic. Okay. this is a very important topic that you people know spark stages and task right we will just uh, you know uh, understand with a real time use case okay i taken a sample data set to you know to to understand a better way okay and a small data set i can say hope you might understood the data set now i just taken a list okay in the list i had taken a, some data okay so let's assume this data size is 256 mb there is a purpose why i am choosing this 256 is because i want to go with a two two partitions okay one one partition is 128 mb another partition is also 128 mb okay so just assume this data further divided into two partitions when you submit a, a on a spark cluster right so now how we will get a data okay so our idea is to get a data like apple how many times it repeated banana okay now i written small code okay this is a small code uh, the first one is a, i'm just creating a spark object okay from this spark session i think you people already know this okay the first step is limit okay this is a common step and uh, rdd okay i'm using parallelize method to to create an rdd one okay now i given a the list of input is here 
then create a RDD one. And then I use a flat map transformation, okay, to split the data by using space. I created RDD two, and then map, okay, to count the number of, uh, you know, occurrences of the word, and then finally I'm using reduce by key to sum the uh, repeated words, and then finally we have to call an action to see the result. That is our aim. Now. How it will, uh, you know, internally uh, Spark is doing. You see this picture. Just concentrate on this one. RDD one here. This RDD one is this one. Okay. As I told you, know, there are two partitions. Okay. In RDD one, see RDD one is this one. Okay. We are now at, uh, you know, uh, parallelize. Okay. When we do parallelize, then we we see this RDD one, right? So. There are two data, divided data set. You can say partition one and partition two. Uh, you know, and as I told you, task is a unit of work which we perform on particular data set, right? Or a chunk of a data. So now, one partition, one task. One partition, one one task. Okay. Same way, I will go to once we perform a flat for flat flat map transformation, then it will create another RDD. Then the same way. Like map and reduce by key. So whatever the transformation that I have been using here, I used here, All right? So now here we are seeing how many RDDs? Total four. Till stage zero, we are calling it as a narrow transformations. And the stage one, we are calling as a wide transformations, right? This entire Spark job are divided into two stages because. Till it triggers Y transformations, entire you know transformations are clubbed into a single unit and calling it as a stage zero. Whenever there is a reduce by key or any shuffling is happening, then new stage will be created. Right now, when we perform an action, then we will get a result: apple five, banana three, and grapes three, and orange five. This is our output for this input data set, right? Now, I hope you understood, guys. Anybody uh, from our team, can you please tell me how many stages created and how many tasks created enter this program? Anyone? Anyone? Please, can you please unmute and tell me our answer? Two stages. Okay. How many tasks? Stages. How many uh, tasks? One, two, three, four, four tasks. Are you sure? Uh, result also. No, 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 no. Task means here I written uh -huh. the task, task. Eight tasks. Yeah, 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 one, two, three, four. So Eight under tasks. stage zero, we are seeing six tasks. Under stage one, we are seeing two tasks. Total A tasks, right? This is what will happen inside the Spark when we submit an application. This is only an a sample, but just assume in a real time, if you have a, a very big data set, it will, it will, uh, you know, also do the similar way. Now we will see if you are clear this, then I will show you real time like this. It will happen, right? There is a port number four zero four one. When you once a job you submit and just go to four zero four one, then you will direct to this page. See, this is an only example, guys. Okay, so I just taken randomly from Google. Okay, because which suits our example. See here, two stages and tasks. You are getting me, guys? Getting me? Yes. This is how Spark will do internally. So when you see here some stages and tasks, you ought to understand like this like this you have to do a reverse engineering okay these many wide transformations was performed or these many narrow transformations got performed or these many partitions got created or these many tasks has been created you have to understand because this picture nowhere we will see in a spark ui we will see only these pictures by seeing this we have to understand or imagine our previous slide. Guys, is it clear? Any questions so far? Guys, I'm open for questions. Okay, we have only few minutes left. So I think this is, uh, that's it for the day from my end. But this is very, very important. 
to understand uh, even to work a real time or to 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 you know based on the data set how many how many executors you supposed to assign okay what is the driver memory executor memory or number of cores okay how many uh, to figure out those numbers you should understand this concept internally otherwise it won't make sense at all you cannot choose a random number of executors or a random number of you no know, cores you should know theory beyond and beyond this then only why i am taking this chapter is i want to explain a performance tuning in a next week if possible to understand that concept this concept is very important <clears throat> to understand these concepts i thought uh, uh, you know first slide which i created is very important that is where i am just you know uh, taking uh, the slide to this slide hope you got an, uh, some clarity any questions guys any questions uh narish one thing yeah, yeah. so uh, partitions partitions is equal to the number of class i mean uh, number of executors so your voice is breaking sorry your name jagdish yeah jagdish yeah can you please speak loudly so that everyone can understand uh -huh. yeah my <laughs> throat is not okay, okay. so okay. uh in in a in a virtual world I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jagdish. I'm not able to okay. hear you. Huh. Is, is it not clear? Yeah, yeah. It is better yeah. now. Can you please speak it? Speak out now. Better. No? Yeah, yeah. Huh. So if we have uh, the partitions, partitions and all depends. Uh, depends on uh, in, uh, if we have uh, a file size of one GB. Wait, one wait, GB wait. Divided by uh, one twenty eight. So and, okay. Like that. Huh. So hmm. partitions and the, on the basis of partitions. Number of partitions, number of executors created, and the number of executors. I mean, one uh, one executor is equal to one task. Correct. I mean, uh, execution of. No, no, no. See, let us say, let us say, let us say. I think, uh, let us say here, I just yes. taken a four executors. Okay, four executors. Yes. Yeah, it is quite possible, right? So four executors, but one executor can can execute two tasks, right? Uh, one by one, one after another. Correct. So it yes. is not it is not mandatory that number of partitions is equal to number of executors, right? If if I if okay. if you say me, uh, uh, you know, okay. I can say that with two executors also I can able to perform this task, but it it may take some time otherwise, right? Yes, correct. But the time uh, is also very important. Based on the time, on in and you know, let us say I want to complete this task in a thirty seconds. Okay, so if I use Four executors, then it is taking thirty seconds. If I use eight executors, it, it may taking fifteen to twenty seconds. Now, now my client is saying, okay, one minute is also fine for me. If client is saying like something like that, then what I will do? I will use only two executors. Getting me? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Kind of. I already explained this topic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. If you if you understand or if you go through my playlist, right? Definitely you will you will you know you will get a more clarity. All right. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. But okay. today's topic is it clear? Yeah. Yeah. Great. 